This is part three in my advanced optimization series using the 2014-2015 Science Olympiad Division B rules. I will show the process and the results of my initial optimizations which led to the best result I achieved during this entire exercise. At the end of this video, I will show the complete testing of my best bridge. If you recall from the previous video, these are my notes from the initial build. As you can see, I used 1 16th by 1 16th bass tension members, which weighed 0.82 grams together. I knew if I was going to get close to a 3 gram bridge, I would need to find out how much weight I could reduce from those components, so I decided to start with that. Here are my notes from my second build, and labeled here as tension build number 1. I built a very strong bridge with over-designed parts and coupled that with what I thought would be the minimum possible tension pieces. In this case, it was 1 32nd by 1 32nd bass, and the combined weight was 0.29 grams. If this held the entire weight, it could potentially save over 0.5 grams, which would be a huge step in getting close to 3 grams total. For this build and the next several, I moved to a slightly tapered design and was using the middle jig shown here. The goal of the tapered design was to try and minimize the amount of material needed for the cross bracing. I was also using a process of building the sides first and then assembling them on the jig. The flat 2D jig here was a way to make that aspect of the build as precise as possible. The bridge did hold the entire weight and failed at 15.97 kilograms. That was somewhat of a surprising result for me as I wasn't expecting that tension pair to perform that well. As it turned out, this isolated tension test only told part of the story that I'll explain a little later. Here is the high speed footage of the failure. You can easily see that the tension member failed, but we were over 15 kilograms, so I was happy with the results. Here is a close up view of the failed tension member, and this is also very encouraging. You can see that while half the stick ripped away from the leg, it was the shearing of the tension member itself that caused the failure. This is a great result that shows the actual limit of the wood and not the joint. Armed with this new information about the potential to immediately lose about half a gram from my initial build due to just the tension members, I got a little ahead of myself and tried to build several bridges at the 3 gram goal. I tried several variations changing the mass and dimensions of the leg and tried several cross member designs basically to make sure I hit 3 grams. Unfortunately, these didn't turn out so well as you can see. It really works best if you can creep up on the best results after settling on a great design, but I jumped the gun a bit here. All three of these builds had different failure points, and I realized it was time to take a step back and try a more systematic approach. At this point, I knew I had to try and isolate another important functional group as much as possible to take the next steps. It was time to look specifically at the cross bracing support. I also decided to go with an even more extreme tapered design to minimize the bracing material. For all the remaining builds, I was using the assembly jig on the right. To try and isolate the cross bracing support as much as possible, I needed to create three bridges where the only difference was the cross bracing. I also wanted to use reasonable mass legs so they wouldn't influence the results too much. Here you can see the results of just the sides. I was very happy to be able to get them this close to each other. This cross bracing optimization yielded some very interesting results, probably the most interesting and useful information in this entire exercise. So I'll spend some time going over the results in a fair amount of detail. Here are my notes for all three of these builds. I'll show them all individually, but it's handy to see them all like this as well. The top two builds were using the exact same design with the only difference being the material dimensions were downsized. The bottom build used an even more minimal design that was able to get the cross bracing weight down even further. Before I talk about the results, I want to show the build notes in more detail. Because the sides of all three of these builds are essentially identical, I'm going to focus only on the cross bracing part of the notes. The first thing that is important to document is the design itself. Here I use a rough sketch of the end view to show the design. I use solid and dotted lines to represent horizontal cross bracing on the front and back of the legs and an X to show the rest of the design. I find it's also handy to use different colors in the note taking process to help keep things more organized. Next, it's very important to keep track of every single piece of the cross supports, not only the dimensions but the mass of each piece. I cut all those pieces ahead of time before assembling them on the bridge. I put a red box around the mass total of each piece group. 
Finally, I add up all the cross bracing material. In this case, it was 1.139 grams. And because I measured the mass of the final completed sides as well as having the final mass of the entire bridge, it's easy to also compute the amount of glue that was being used for just the cross bracing. An interesting side note, this was the bridge I featured in the exploding bridge video and at the time was the highest efficiency bridge I had ever built. It held over 25 kilograms for an efficiency of 4494. That means it was an extremely well balanced bridge, but it was optimal at 25 kilograms, not 15 kilograms. Getting that level of efficiency at 15 kilograms is what the rest of this challenge would be all about. The second build in this test used the exact same design as the previous one, but every single cross bracing stick is scaled down dimensionally. You can see the total cross bracing material mass has been significantly cut down from 1.14 grams to about 0.5 grams. The amount of glue is nearly identical as it uses the same number of joints. And finally, the third build used a slightly simplified design for the cross bracing and was able to save another 0.16 grams of material and now used about 0.07 grams less glue because it had fewer joints. If you saw the scores on my note pages, you might have noticed that the efficiency dropped each time the cross bracing mass was reduced. That in of itself wasn't unexpected, but how they failed was a big surprise to me and perhaps was the most interesting thing to come out of this entire exercise. As you can clearly see here, all three of these bridges failed with the tension member ripping away from the leg and each one held less and less weight. Remember though that the sides of each of these builds were essentially identical, the same legs and the same tension members. Typically when I see a failure like this, I would think that the leg density isn't high enough to handle the load from the tension member, but here all the leg densities are the same. So what must be happening is that as the cross bracing is being reduced, the leg is deforming more and that deformation is inducing the start of the tension detachment. It does appear that you can even see a higher amount of twisting in the lightest cross bracing test on the right. This information really changes the game in trying to determine what the weak point of a given design is. Seeing a failure like this doesn't automatically mean that the root cause is what is obvious and that the best way to solve the problem might be to change another aspect of the design. This also shows how interdependent the functional groups of this bridge really are. I spent the next five builds tweaking the legs and slight modifications to the cross bracing design and materials. While none of these were terrible results, they weren't great either. It all came together with build number 14. This would turn out to be my best result. The bridge weighed 3.27 grams and held 14.823 kilograms for an efficiency of 4533. I was very happy with this result and this bridge would have easily placed second at nationals for that year. I continued to try other optimizations to see if I could beat the 4900 score, but I wasn't able to get there given the time I wanted to spend on this project. You can see that this bridge used 132nd by 116th tension members, so that there was a chance that this particular build could have been lighter with a different tension choice as well. I will show my other optimization attempts in the next part of this series to share some of the ideas I looked at, but for now I'll show the testing process of this bridge. Here is the bridge right before testing at 3.27 grams. And here is the live testing sequence for this bridge. And finally, here is the high speed footage of the failure. You can see that the left lower back cross bracing detached first, which might have been from a less than an ideal joint. This was a little discouraging as it tells me this bridge could have held a bit more and might have been able to hit an actual efficiency of close to 5000, but I was never able to reproduce this result. Stay tuned for the next part of this series where I show some of the more exotic optimizations I tried to see if I could improve this result. 
Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel if you like this kind of content.